Today we are now heading for Kaziranga and uh, we are all very excited. The landscape is different. It's so lots of uh, other wildlife. You have samp deer, you have very big population of rhino, elephants, a lot of greenery, uh, it's a lot of water bodies and I think by now a lot of migratory birds are going to be there. Spread over an area of 430 square kilometers, Kaziranga National Park is one of the most important wildlife parks in entire India. It is most famous for the number of one-horned rhino that are found here. It is the highest anywhere in the world and is two-third of the total world population. Apart from the big five mammals, the one-horned rhinoceros, elephant, water buffalo, tiger and swamp deer. Kaziranga National Park is split into four zones. The central or Kaziranga Range, the western or Baguri Range, the eastern or Agaratoli Range and the Burapahar Range. We arrived by late afternoon at Kaziranga on day two and explored the central zone of the park. The central range is the core zone of the Tiger Reserve or a strict nature reserve, where casual visitors are not permitted. This is the first time I'm shooting rhino. I've never been to Kaziranga oh. before. So I'm very excited to be on this film. And the second is that uh, today I've got this opportunity to you know, be with you. So I just want to ask you as many questions as possible as to what is the composition, best composition of shooting a rifle? I mean, how, what would be the ideal uh, dream shot? There is no room that you have to leave so much space uh, in front or so much of space at the back and how much is the bottom you should include. What gives a lift to the picture, that's the right composition. Anand gets the opportunity to share the safari with Rajesh this time. There's one over there, half submerged. I have stayed many times here, whole day, cooking with them, eating with them. I think they're going inside. They're going inside the forest. They are not very comfortable with our presence on Jeep. We venture deep in the forest, watching and shooting images until sunset. Once back in the hotel, Rajesh asks all the participants to select few of their shots and show it to him. Beautiful backdrop, isn't it? The session starts with everyone showing their images one by one. And a more fraction. Fraction is bending, bending this way and just shoot. You don't get that. The group is keenly listening to what Rajesh has to say about their images. The best part is that Mr. Bedi, uh, every day in the evening, he goes through, he's, he asks us to come up with our five best images and then analyzes those images and teaches us. So the kind of learning that we are having out here along with the fun and Following our passion is something which is uh, not possible otherwise. People who have a passion for wildlife, not necessarily great photographers. Um, so that's his value into the program. Okay, and when we see a lot of people, they have passion for wildlife. They know a little bit of photography, but then he's adding so much value to them, learning, learning a lot from him. So it's been good. The next morning, we are off to the eastern zone of the region. The eastern zone is famous for birding. More than 400 species of birds have been recorded in this area. A bird watch is paradise par excellence. It is also a great nesting place for local and migratory birds like hornbill, egret, heron, adjutant stalk and fishing eagle. Just after a few meters inside, everyone was thrilled to see the great Asiatic elephant in the water. The group ventured deeper into the forest and enjoyed sightings till afternoon.
In the evening, Rajesh and his team decides to visit the western zone of the park. This time, Sachin joins Rajesh for the safari. What made you to come to on this time trail, uh, adventure trail? Uh, my partner told me about this. I wasn't even aware. He said that I read uh, something interesting which might be of your interest. So okay. he gave me this uh, article and he said, see if this interests you. I think you should go for it. Uh -huh. So that's where I uh, went on Opted for this, yeah, okay. for this. The safari in the Western Range is popular because of the chance it offers to get close to the great Indian one-horned rhinosaurus. Wildlife photography is all about patience. A few kilometers into the interior, our guides decided we should just stop and listen for the deer calls, which usually mean that a tiger is somewhere nearby. Even the rhino is alert. There was uh, alarm calls by hawk deer. You might see the tiger. Unfortunately, we couldn't spot the tiger. But as they say, even if we don't spot the tiger, be sure that the tiger has spotted us. So after about 30 minutes of silently waiting in the forest, we decide to move on. That's nice, yeah. In the evening session, the group gets their pictures evaluated by Mr. Rajesh Bedi. The most important aspect for me was, see, technically we go to YouTube, uh, read books and understand the technicalities of photography. But what he told me was how to tell a story with one single picture and that is amazing for me. My reservation, this white patch, mm -hmm. that is spoiling your image. The whole concentration goes here. Oh, this is good. Uh, one small yeah. opening no, there. Make it slightly darker, that's it. It's very nice. In this trail, mixing up with all these different 20 photographers, it's, it's very interesting to understand their point of view, how they want to shoot, what do they think about wildlife. And I think it's two-way conversations that we are having and I think there's a lot of things that they are learning, there are a lot of things that we are also learning from them. Just by observing him commenting on the other's images, I observed a lot and I learned. And I used to every day like make 10 or 15 notes for myself that I have to carry forward the next day. At Kaziranga, the open country makes wildlife viewing fairly easy. This would be the last day in Kaziranga. As the mist lifts and the rising sun touches the hills in the distance, herds of Bara Singha and wild buffalo are to be seen in the marshes. Rhinos browse unconcernedly as the visitors pass by and an occasional herd of elephants is also sighted. It gives people a good platform right, uh, from across the country to interact and to access to some of these parks. So you trust a brand like Times and Yatra, we know that they will put us in the best places, they'll take us through the right accommodation, travel, mode of travel, so I think it's been a good experience so far. The next morning is a real highlight of the trip. We head towards the Gibbon Wildlife Sanctuary, which is roughly around 135 kilometers from Kaziranga. The forested southern slope contains India's only ape. The Hulog Gibbon. They may give you time to sit and they'll be looking at you, but the ideal choice that we should see them swinging, and that's they are known for that. So you can capture them in action, otherwise, go shaky over to you. See, if you don't keep your uh, ISO higher, you're going to lose the pictures. That's you'll be all shaky. It is advised that we visit the park early in the morning as this is the time when the primates are out of their home in search of food. After walking for a while, 
a part of the group sighted their first gibbon. Spotting gibbons are never easy as they are almost entirely arboreal and come down to the ground only in exceptional situations. It's a very big challenge to shoot them in that picture because the sky is burning, trees are dark. And unless light is falling on the animal, you cannot take a good picture. They have long forelimbs and shorter hind limbs, which are very conducive for these animals to move around the forest by swinging along the branches on the canopy of the forest. One of the great ways of shooting wildlife in its natural habitat is by building hides or blinds as it allows wildlife to be viewed without being disrupted or unnecessarily disturbed. Before leaving the sanctuary, Rajesh sir wanted to explain everyone how to build a hide in a forest. After learning about the hides, we left for Guwahati knowing we would be back. It is once in a lifetime experience of the wild as the trail culminated at Guwahati. I'm so thankful to Times of India and Yatra for putting this kind of a trail together. And, and I hope that you know they keep on doing this in future, and I get more opportunities to be part of uh, you know these trails. And I think everybody is uh, happy with what uh, uh, you know we have uh, done over here. Stein's Passion Trail, I think, has given them so much in very first trip that they are going to cherish this for a very long time. For me, the takeaway is really a larger set of friends, a larger community uh, where we can really hook up and you know share experiences and you know ask questions and learn from each other's experiences uh, and we're really looking forward to future trails uh, either with a larger group or maybe going uh, in smaller groups as well. We've seen a gradual progression so the biggest takeover is growth as a photographer and I think the sec and secondly I, didn't, I had never seen a rhino in my life so seeing so many rhinos in the wild was a very good experience for me. It has been a tremendous learning phase for me. I have learned to say from 0 to 6 in a scale of 1 to 10. In the end, everyone has their own view and aesthetic. And what I like may not be what you like. That's what makes taking and looking at pictures so much fun. Right? We learn from each other. As he said, pictures speak louder than words.